Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to ride the SkyTrain in Atlanta, go through the long TSA pre-check line, check out the turbulence forecast before our flight. Thanks, Jim. Fly with JetBlue to Boston on a lovely A220-300 and enjoy all the odd whale sounds that it makes. I've just checked out of the Gateway Center Marriott, which is right next to the SkyTrain station. It takes you right into Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, where I'll be catching my flight. And I'm in the blue side today, which is appropriate because I'm flying on JetBlue. The blue side or north side of Hartsfield Jackson International Airport holds every other airline other than Delta and where you'll check in for flights on airlines like Frontier, Spirit, Alaska, JetBlue, United, and American. There might be more. That's all that comes to mind. Based on my experience in Atlanta as well as Boston, I believe JetBlue does all self bag tagging. You'll go to the kiosk, enter your information, print out your bag tags, tag it, and then go to the agent for ID check and weighing of your bag. Essentially every other airline here had a decent line. I uh, walked up to JetBlue and uh, I was the only one there. So I'm way early. Um, I'm looking across uh, a restaurant right now and it looks like there's a pretty good line over there. That's probably the pre-check line, so I probably did a good thing. Looks like they've got the line going through uh, the center of the atrium, so maybe I won't be showing you that. Way off in the distance there, there's a pre-check sign. So apparently there's only one pre-check checkpoint. Maybe there's more. I don't know, I'm just following the signs. This is one of the issues with TSA pre-check is a lot of people have it at a big airport. So this is what normal security used to look like. Lots of pre-checkers. This is why I'm considering upping to clear. All right, I'm through TSA. My bag got a special look for some reason, but they didn't open it. It's not unusual for me because of all the camera gear. I am in T, which if you watch Matt over the years, T is the wall of doom. And I only have to go to T16. If you are flying American or United, this is where their clubs are in the T concourse. So that's the Admiral's Club over there. And the United Club is down here. Well, that was uh, super easy this morning. It is 7.42. I'm so early to my gate. I think I've, I've actually got two hours till departure time. So I probably could have slept in another hour, which right now that would have been pretty nice. But uh, if you're flying without pre-check or clear, uh, you should get here even earlier than I did for like my flight. I just passed the American flight to uh, Dallas-Fort Worth and the flight was already closed and people were just walking up to the gate going, hey, why can't I get on? I suspect they were in security. Any airport with really long lines where you do not have pre-check, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do the same thing I did for Canada. Three hours before your departure time is probably wise. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, the worst thing that happens is you gotta just hang out in the airport and watch people, so. Anyway, I think that's that's my top tip for the day. All right, so my flight today is from ATL to Boston. JetBlue 896. So I'm on that one. The Turbly app provides a turbulence forecast for your flight. Looking at the graph, the highest probability and highest amount of turbulence appears to be about 45 minutes into my flight. Let's continue the trip report and find out what happens. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna finish up my Coke here, maybe get another one. I need some caffeine. Ah, caffeine. I forgot to mention there is a priority pass lounge in Atlanta. It's the, the club at ATL. Uh, it's in the International Terminal, which is at the other end of the airport, the pretty much the exact opposite end from where I'm sitting right now. And it's one of those things, 
I didn't really feel like the juice was worth the squeeze, so I skipped the plane train trip all the way over to the International Terminal in favor of a little relaxation here this morning, so. I'm in boarding group B, which I believe in this case, B equals back. <laughs> Good morning. The JetBlue A220 does not have a first class cabin. Rather, it has even more space at the front with regular economy in the back. And they advertise the most legroom in economy of any airline. The even more space is very, very spacious. And I'll be featuring that on the next JetBlue trip report. But as it relates to regular economy, Still super amount of leg room. It's very comfortable. These are slimline seats and they're configured in a two on one side and three on the other. This is typical of most A220s that I've been on. All right, let's check out the seat. I've got a chip card reader or a RFID chip reader. Got power and our headphone ports. It all looks pretty good. And here in the seat, I've got lots of pockets. I've got the menu. We'll take a look at that here in a sec. But uh, yeah, this is standard economy for JetBlue. Once again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard JetBlue. Are we with service to Boston? If and then down below, there's a single power port, looks like. Nice view of the wing back here. So I am in 20A if you're looking to sit on the A220. Uh, this is the A220 300. Mm, you can even get a pillow, you can get earbuds, you can get a blanket, and of course, snack boxes. I uh, don't think any of the Eat up cafe items are going to be available because the flight's not three and a half hours long. And looks like Pepsi products. Now that we're up in the air, let's check out the CPAC entertainment system. Starts with instructions on how to connect to free Wi-Fi. It's also got lots of movies, TV shows, and even some games. Live TV is provided by DirecTV. Movies and games by JetBlue. And of course you have my favorite, the 3D moving map. Very responsive. Almost as good as looking out the window on a clear day. I was watching my movie and in the middle of it, every screen on the airplane switched to a JetBlue commercial. It's kind of annoying. I had to watch like three commercials at the beginning of the movie as well. So 
maximizing revenue. Meanwhile, outside, there is some significant pop-up storms off to our left. Do you remember the Turbly app predicted turbulence at 45 minutes into the flight? This next clip is 45 minutes into the flight. So we've reached snack time and full can of Pepsi Zero, which is awesome. And for the JetBlue snack, I selected plantain chips. I'll probably save those for later. Not very hungry, but it is time for the snack du jour. It's that time again. Time for the snack du jour. Uh, what is the snack du jour? It's the snack of the day. Mm, that sounds good. I'll have that. So my snack du jour is the Bobo's strawberry stuffed oat bite. Like many of my snacks, it got a little squashed in transit. But the strawberry filling did not s squeeze out, so... Let's take a bite. I guess I was expecting a little bit more filling in there. Regardless of how much there's in there, it's still very good. I'd give that one a thumbs up. Which you could do right now if you enjoyed the snack to shore. Thanks. It turns out to get free Wi-Fi, you have to watch an ad on your phone. I've been trying to connect for an hour now and I finally figured out. Go to flyfi.com and then you pick an ad to watch. All right, so now that I'm connected to the internet, I can open up FlyRadar24. Since the Wi-Fi is free, I thought I'd take a peek for you. It starts with the onboard menu, which appears to be the same as the paper menu. The onboard info, live TV, movies, magazines, music, and more. Essentially everything on the seatback screen you can get on your phone. As I land in Boston, I'm going to ask you for some help. If you've already given this video a like, I appreciate that. If you're still watching and you haven't given it a like, this is another chance for you to do that. If you want to do a little bit more, you can go ahead and subscribe, hit that reminder bell. You'll be kept up to date on all my travels. And if you want to do even more, this is your opportunity to join the channel as a member. Members get benefits in live streams as well as a little bit of swag. And this week we get to welcome a new member, Bodacious Enlightenment, on board. Thank you for your support. And thank you to all my current members as well. JetBlue welcomes you to Boston, where the local time is 11.56 a.m. For your safety, please keep your seatbelts fastened and keep carry-on items put away until the captain turns off the seatbelt sign. Be careful when opening overhead bins, as items tend to shift during the flight. If you have a receipt that says claim my gate, you may pick up your items outside the front boarding door. If you need any help getting off the plane, feel free to remain seated after we've arrived at the gate, so we may better assist you. For information on connecting flights and baggage claim, you may check airport monitors or download our free JetBlue mobile app. And on behalf of all of us here at JetBlue, especially this Boston-based crew, thank you for choosing JetBlue. If you have any questions or comments about flying with JetBlue or travel in general, please post those below. As we reach the end of today's trip report, I'm going to wish you and yours happy travels. See you next time, everyone. And thanks for watching.